What's up YouTube Universe, this is Jacob Dark, and today we're taking a look at the Creative Stage V2 2.1 soundbar. Just how far has soundbar technology come, and can a $100 soundbar produce enough power to create a full immersive viewing experience when watching movies or gaming? We'll unbox, talk specs, and run some tests to find out. If you find this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Now, let's not waste any more time and get into today's video. The Creative Stage V2 is a $109, 2.1 soundbar and subwoofer combo aimed at movie watchers, show bingers, and gamers and features clear dialogue and surround technology powered by Sound Blaster. We can get a lot of information just from the box, which displays features in addition to those mentioned, like the peak power of 160 watts, Bluetooth 5.0 compatibility, a few of the connection types, as well as the fact that it's wall mountable. Now I've also got the BTW3 Bluetooth transmitter here, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Inside the box, you'll find the soundbar packed on top, the subwoofer underneath, and a cardboard box which houses the cables and manuals. I could have probably taken that out more gracefully. Here are the contents of the box. We have the soundbar which measures just under 27 inches wide, about 3 inches height, 4 inches depth, and weighs about 4 pounds, with the sub measuring at 4.6 inches wide, 16.7 inches tall, a 10 inch depth, and weighs in at just over 7 pounds. We have the remote, a USB-C to USB-A cable, an AC adapter, an aux cable, and for some reason, a second AC adapter was boxed up with mine. And of course, we have your manual and the Bluetooth adapter I mentioned earlier, which is an additional accessory and not included in the box. The soundbar front grille has a nice metal look to it, which houses two 2.5-inch 20-watt speaker drivers inside, features your power, volume, and Bluetooth buttons on one side, and has a nice glossy body on the top of the unit. Try to ignore that dust if you can, I swear I literally just dusted before recording this clip. Upon powering up the device, we can see the middle of the soundbar has an LED input display which displays your current input selection or volume level. On the back of the unit, from left to right, we have your left wall mount, followed by your USB-C which can be used for your PC, PS4 or Nintendo Switch, an HDMI ARC for your TV, and a standard aux for any device with an aux output. On the right side, again, we have your wall mount with the optical and sub ports, as well as your AC adapter connection. The back of the unit has gloss on the edges, with the middle connection hub portion being matte black. If you see me waving, wave back at your device so people look at you funny. The subwoofer has a 5.25 inch 40 watt speaker on the side, and is front ported to make placement even easier to set up. I know I previously mentioned the sub's height at just under 17 inches, but for comparison, here's a shot of it standing next to my Xbox Series X. Anyone want to trade for a PS5? Now, the Stage V2 doesn't claim to have compatibility with the Series X, but for those wondering, I did attempt both the USB-C to USB-A cable and the Bluetooth adapter and neither worked. Since the Series X has no optical or aux out, if you have a Series X, the V2 is not compatible at the time of this video. While I haven't landed myself a PS5 yet, thanks a lot scalpers, I can only go by online specs, but from what I've seen, there's no luck either as far as a wired connection. However, you can use the BTW3 adapter, which is also compatible with PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC and Mac. It's worth mentioning that on a compatible device you can use different codecs, which can improve your listening experience and even give you low latency. Now let's take a quick look at the remote to see what we can do. From top to bottom, we have your power button, mute button, TV ARC USB input selector, optical aux input selector, and Bluetooth button. Below that we have volume up, down, back, play, pause, and skip. 
then Surround, Reset, and Dialog, and finally, the bottom three buttons let you adjust your treble and bass. So just how much of a difference will it make over your TV or computer monitor speakers? Before we run those tests, let's talk about the Dialog and Surround functions. Dialog, just as its name implies, takes the dialogue of whatever you're watching and puts it clear-cut center of the mix so that you can hear words more accurately. The surround takes the sound from being condensed in the middle of the soundbar and projects a more 3D image so that it fills the space and creates a more surround-like effect. Now, everyone's going to have their personal preference on settings, but I found that for me, having the dialogue and surround on, the treble at plus two, and the bass at minus three created the perfect happy medium and kept any signal from distortion. Now, let's go ahead and check out those tests and see the difference. It just never went off. It was, it was defective. We didn't know that. We were, we were trapped. For how long? Two days. Huh. So much trauma. No, I... It just never went off. It was... It was defective. We didn't know that. We were... We were trapped. For how long? Two days. Huh. So much trauma. I also connected a Nintendo Switch to get a quick idea how it would handle gaming, and in an up-close and personal environment, I'd much rather use the Stage V2 versus a pair of cheap computer monitor speakers, which I've just never found to be that great. When it's all said and done, the Creative Stage V2 is definitely a winner and super bargain at the $100 price point, and one I'd highly recommend for any budget-conscious buyer. If you're using your TV or monitor speakers, you will definitely hear an improvement. That's going to do it for today. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be alerted each time I upload more content. So until next time, thank you for watching, stay tuned, and have a great day.